Hi, I'm Chanel Shea Calvin and you are watching What's On, the Midlands Entertainment page. In today's show, Jules Pickering will be giving us her rundown of the arts events for the coming month. And later, I'll be joined by professional musician and vocal coach, Carl McGregor, who is the organiser of an amazing event in aid of the Nepal earthquake. Also, as I'm sure you are aware, the Midlands is pretty good when it comes to days out and events. And there's always something happening right here in the region. And we have done all the hard work for you. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see all the comedy shows and gigs that are taking place this week. And all the events, theatre productions and days out can be seen on the right. You'll have plenty of time to write these down as they'll be there throughout the show. Now, if you have an event taking place of your own and you want, us to, want it to be shared on the show, just simply email what's on at bigcentre.tv. It's also on the bottom of the screen for you. Well, let's get straight to it. And welcome, Jules, and over to you. Thank you very much. Well, we've got a really eclectic mix of things happening on the arts scene in the coming month. I'm going to try and give you a preview of a few of them. Uh, first off, at the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum in Coventry. Still never been there, but it sounds like a fabulous place. We've got the story of children's television from 1946 to today. Um, it's a free entry exhibition with seven decades of objects, memorabilia, merchandise, clips and images, reviewing the magical programs of our childhood. So you can see some great original props and characters, people like the Wombles, Morph, Gordon the Gopher. Uh, this exhibition is supported by Kaleidoscope behind Big Centre TV and features interactive elements for kids of all ages, including games to play, dressing up and art activities. So one for the family there. We've got the Sketchbook Sessions at Newhampton Arts Centre in Wolverhampton. Uh, they had their first event a couple of days ago. Their second one's going to be on the 10th of June from 7 till 9 in the evening. That's a free fortnightly art club run by the Dead Pens crew. Uh, you bring a sketchbook, pens, beer and tea bags and the attendees create artworks based around a chosen phrase. Uh, the event responses are then compiled into a zine to promote the attending artists. Uh, you can get more information on that on Facebook at Sketchbook Sessions. We've got a few uh, fun things happening at Wolverhampton Art Gallery at the moment. Um, Martin Parr, Black Country Stories. Uh, that was at Warsaw Art Gallery last year and was a fantastic show. So if you can make it to Wolverhampton, I highly recommend it. Uh, that's until August. It's an entire gallery wall uh, filled with hundreds of photographs of black country people, everyday folk from the area. Um, they've produced a photographic portrait and archive about everyday life in the black country. People from all walks of life, including Wolves football fans, Wolverhampton Civic Hall ravers, shop and factory wor workers. Really, really interesting uh, visual experience. Also at Wolf uh, Wolverhampton Art Gallery, we've got Pop in Space, We Choose to Go to the Moon. Uh, that explores artists' responses to the space race during the Cold War. Um, in the 50s and 60s, artists employed space imagery to reflect the glamour and the power um, of the space age um, trying to get to the moon first. Uh, half a century later, this exhibition explores the tensions from the technological and ideological rivalry between the US and the Soviet, Soviet Union. So that should be a really fun one too. At the Bantock House Museum, we've got a Georgian enamels exhibition. Uh, in the 1800s, drugs locally made enamel boxes were very desirable and popular among polite Georgian society. Uh, they made things like snuff boxes, bonbon boxes, um, and perfumes to hide unpleasant smells. So this exhibition will include new and imagined stories and new enamels created by a local craftsman, John Grayson, and uh, that should be a really fun one to take a look at. At Bilston Craft Gallery, we have the Liberated Quilt, New Work Through Our Hands. If you're a textile fan, that's a good one. It provides a showcase for 23 international artists working mainly with stitched textile techniques, including quilt making and embroidery. Um, their work challenges and expands the boundaries of textiles, um, you know, everything you ever thought about quilts and more, uh, showing how innovative ideas can evolve from a traditional art form. Um, so this gives an opportunity to experience work by textile artists considered to be some of the best in the world in Bilston. 
Also at Bilston Craft Gallery, um, starting on the 3rd of June, we've got Steps to Self-Employment exhibition. So this is an exhibition showcasing the work of a wide range of emerging artists and creative businesses based in the West Midlands. Uh, you can actually meet the exhibitors in person on the 3rd of June at 4 p.m. And the show is part of a Steps to Self-Employment course, getting artists paid and working, and includes people like Steve Grafaflage Edwards, a fantastic street artist from uh, the West Midlands, Paula Kovacs, David Morin, Sharon Samuel from the Sewing Lounge and Ruth Watkins. At the Barber Institute of Fine Arts, we have from Red Ellen to Oswald Mosley. Uh, that's until the 6th of September. That's uh, kind of political caricatures. So the politicians of uh, 100 years ago, very colourful characters. And this display features portrait drawings and caricatures by Edmund Cap of some of the most outstanding political figures of the interwar period, uh, including Sir Oswald Mosley, Sir Winston Churchill and Red Ellen Wilkins. Son. Also at the Barber Institute, we've got Smith, Dobson and British Portraiture, 1920 to 1960. That's a snapshot through the lens of modernism. This fac fascinating exhibition explores and juxtaposes the work of two underappreciated British artists, the sculptor Frank Dobson and the painter Matthew Smith. Um, so that features people like the author Roald Dahl, actress Jean Simmons and Bloomsbury elder statesman Sir Osbert Sitwell. Um, and also textile designer Marion Dawn, who apparently designed the patterns for the London Tube. At the New Art Gallery in Warsaw, we've got uh, a few things continuing there. We've still got Sean McFarlane doing We Are Illuminated till the 26th of July. We've got Elizabeth Rowe, Everything Lasts Forever, Nothing Lasts Forever until the 23rd of August. Uh, we've got a new exhibition opening there, Small Worlds. Um, the artists in this exhibition focus their attention on the urban environment. How do we understand the concept of local within an increasingly globalised world? Um, for some artists, Warsaw provides a focus for a consideration of the impact of social and economic change, and the artists have tried to represent that. We've got some lovely people there. We've got Graham Cholton, Rita Donner, uh, we've got Lucy McLaughlin, who's another fantastic artist, did that lovely piece on the side of the old library, uh, Mark Power and Rashid Rana. So that's uh, worth a visit if you're in Warsaw, always free at Warsaw Art Gallery. Something a bit more contemporary, we've got Dead Pixels on Friday the 12th of June. That'll be at Spotlight and Next Door in Digbeth as part of Digbeth Dining. There'll be street food, three floors of retro gaming. There'll be 3D projection mapping for the first time at the event. And we'll have live art from Red Sun and local legend Hoaxer. So that's a, definitely one of the best nights out in Birmingham. We're coming up to Digbeth first Friday. That's going to be 5th of June, uh, next Friday. Um, as you know, on Digbeth first Friday, Digbeth comes alive on the first Friday of each month with exhibitions, late night openings, special events, culture in unexpected places, live music, street food and more. So you can cruise around all the different venues in the Digbeth area. Um, always can get your information from digbethfirstfriday.com and also at Twitter, Digbeth first Friday. A couple of highlights happen there next week we've got home for waifs and strays at the minerva works uh, they're presenting a funded platform called backbone um, which sounds really really interesting the the exhibition will feature primarily performance video sound installation works that are for somebody else uh, they put an open call out to artists to create works on the theme of giving back and uh, they've put together a really eclectic group of artists to perform that night so that's definitely worth a look um, also next Friday as part of Digbeth First Friday we've got Friction Arts hosting First Friday Frolics at the Edge 8 till late with a £3 entry to raise funds for their July exhibition that night includes cabaret, spoken word and enigmatic enigmatic characters from the Tin Can Choir. At Strix on Faisley Street, we have the final instalment of Soup, Part 1, The Feminist Residency. That'll be a show called This Is What a Feminist Looks Like. It'll be on from 6.30 till 9 o'clock and includes the works of Lucy Hutchinson, Emily Malenga and Demi Nandra. 
At the RBS, RBSA, we have a nautical craft exhibition on now till the 12th of September, um, inspired by the textures and colours of the coastline. That sounds really nice. Um, and Transient Arts are doing something a little bit different till July 24th. Uh, they've got an exhibition at the Newman Brothers Coffin Works, um, a former coffin furniture factory located in the Jewellery Quarter. Artists and designers have visited the museum, been inspired by the environment, and there'll be work on display there. Um, also opening this month, we've got historic tourist attractions um, opening uh, that'll give a glimpse into Birmingham's rich and vibrant past. Um, included in those sites are Soho House, Blakesley Hall, Sarehole Mill, Aston Hall and the Museum of the Jewellery Quarter. So that wraps up our summary of the arts events. Lots going on, lots to enjoy. Anything you'd like to let us know, please email at whatson at bigcentre.tv. Welcome back to What's On. Shortly, I'll be joined by professional musician and vocal coach, Carl McGregor, who is the organiser of an amazing event in aid of the Nepal earthquake. Before that, I'm going to hand you over to Lee, who has the rundown of some of this week's events. Over to you, Lee. Thanks, Chanel. Well, we'll kick off with a quick reminder that the Alchemy Festival finishes on Saturday. Look up Black Country Touring online for more details. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Because it's time for Listen with Alexi. Yep, Alexi Sale is bringing his one-man show to the Midlands Arts Centre on Saturday the 30th. Apparently it'll be followed by questions, answers and shouting. Right, if you were watching last week, you'll have heard me do this. Boom, boom! Well, don't worry, I won't do it again this week, because it's terrible. But it's all because Basil Brush is in the area, and on Sunday he's going to be at the Alexandra Theatre in Birmingham. Great fun. Next, award-winning musical mischief makers East End Cabaret have been headlining the first ever Birmingham Cabaret Festival. There's still time to go along, and you'll find it at the Old Joint Stock Theatre until Saturday the 30th. Next, 400 years of glassmaking in Stourbridge is being celebrated at the 6th Annual International Festival of Glass, and that's at Ruskin Mill in Stourbridge until Sunday. The Live the Adventure Company is hosting another fun day on Sunday the 31st. All proceeds are going to the Nepal Earthquake Appeal. There's jousting, kayaking, a laser tag, and it all takes place at the Old Vicarage Adventure Centre in Stottersden near Cleebury Mortimer. And finally, it's the Warsaw Big Weekend on Saturday and Sunday. It all takes place at the Arboretum and entrance is free. You can see the Mega Kites Festival, meet all your favourite characters, or even have a go on Warsaw's biggest fun fair. Oh, and do a search for their website. Plenty of money off vouchers in there. Well, whatever you're up to, have fun and I'll see you soon. Well, thanks for that, Lee. There really is something for everyone. Now I'm joined by Carl McGregor. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Chanel. Um, it's great to be here. It's Thanks great for to having have you here. Well, before we talk about this amazing event, which you've obviously put together, yep. um, tell me a little bit about yourself and how long you've been a musician for. I've, um, I've been a musician for practice, well, since I was eight years old. Um, I started playing in my, in my father's church uh, back back in the days when everything was black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we, we, uh, I became a professional musician at the age of about 18. I did a tour with uh, an American artist and, um, and it kind of snowballed from there really. Um, and um, everything that I've done is music based, whether I'm performing it, playing it or, or teaching it. Um, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a ride. Has it? It has been a ride, <laughs> I've got to say. So what instrument do you actually play then? Um, I play drums. Drums is my first instrument. That's my first love. Uh, but I, I also play keyboards uh, and um, do a bit of singing as well. Oh, so you're really multi-talented then. Well, <laughs> you I can try. do quite a lot. I do try to be, <laughs> yes. I, I do. I, try, I like to dabble. Mm -hmm. at various various things musically and uh, yeah, it, I, I, I enjoy it. Is it quite hard obviously performing as a musician and also like coaching people as well? Is it hard to balance the two together? Um, not, not really, no. Um, what, one of the things that I love doing is um, as, as, as a vocal coach uh, is um, encouraging young talent. Um, I, I, I spend a day and a half a week um, at, at the Goldmine Centre at the Warsaw Studio School um, coaching performing arts students 
and um, students that are um, not very confident, you know, may, may have come from difficult backgrounds and, and you can see the potential in them. So I love, I love to draw out what I feel is in them uh, and get them to realise that, yes, that they have got something to offer and that they can open their mouths and it can sound good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I think I enjoy that as much as I do performing myself. I think that's quite amazing. It's quite a selfless thing to do, and I guess, which I think is, is pretty cool, which ties in quite nicely with the event which you're putting on, which is completely selfless, obviously. So um, why did you want to support the Nepal earthquake? Well, when, when the Nepal earthquake um, happened, when it was in the news, uh, just like everybody, I was I was completely appalled by what I saw. Yeah. With um, kids being dragged out of the rubble and you know, um, women and children, men, women and children, just being affected by by that. And I, I had a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a Bob Geldof moment, mm-hmm. where not that I look anything like Bob Geldof. Wow. As you can see. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I, I, I just got on the phone and spoke to a few friends of mine, um, fellow musicians and performers, and said, "Listen, if I put something on to raise money for for for, for this worthy cause, would would you support it?" And and everybody I called said, "Yes, I'm in." That's um, amazing. So yeah, it kind of snowballed from there. Really, um, we we we've just got this evening of, of great musicians, really superb, top class uh, session musicians uh, and, and singers and um, various guest artists as well coming to support it. And Are you able to name a few at all or is it, is it a bit of a secret? Or? No, no secret at all. We've got, um, we've got a couple of um, stars from, um, from the BBC's The Voice. Um, we've got Sasha Simone, who was who was in Team Tom mm-hmm. this uh, this year in this year's series. Isn't she and local she, as well? She's or? local, yeah. She's a local girl uh, from from Wollinol, uh, near uh-huh. Wolverhampton, and uh, so she. I called her up, and she said, "Yes, I'm in." And then we've got Leah McFall, who was I think it was about two years ago. She she got. All, all the way to the final, came second she's under Will I, Will I Am. Oh, she's just amazing. She's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, uh, tremendous voice. But I've known Leah for a long time. So um, I, I called her up and she said, yeah, yeah I'm going to come up. And she, she's actually cancelled the recording session that day so mm-hmm. she can come up and, and, and do that. So... Um, I'm not sure if she'll bring Will I Am with him with her, but that would be nice. That, that, that would be? be nice. That'd be really cool. If he's watching uh, this, Will I Am, you've been invited. Yes. Come on, on. come oh, along. So, and it's you performing? Are you performing there as well? Yeah, I'll be on the drums and I'll be doing a little bit of singing as well myself. And um, yeah, we we just want. I think we we just want as many people as we can just to come and and support. And even even if um, even even if you can't come along. Donate, uh, and um, we want to raise as much money as we can. Uh, we've got uh, some of the uh, one or two students from the studio school performing as well, mm-hmm. um, which which I'm really excited about. I, I, I love working with youngsters and giving them an opportunity to work with professional musicians, and and that that that's just going to give them a lot of confidence as well. But I think the thing that I'm most excited about. Is that we we we've made contact with a an organisation, a charity that's actually working on the ground in Nepal. And mm-hmm. uh, they they were actually there when the earthquake hit. Oh, okay. Um, a, a youth with a mission, YWAM. So that we're we're sending the money direct to them. Um, they're going to start rebuilding in September after the monsoon season. So we're really excited about that. Oh, it's so much to look forward to. And so thank you so much. Wish you the best of luck as well. So thank you. So don't forget, that's on a Wednesday night. And if you'd like to support this amazing cause, then just simply visit www.goldminecentre.co.uk. That's all that we have time for today. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter and drop us a message if you want us to advertise your event. And to play us out, here's a video by Call Me Unique, one of the artists appearing this weekend at the Legends of Reggae Tour. This is Rock the Pearls. 
Take care and I'll see you soon. Diamonds and the gold don't do it for me. I'm the type of person for the world. Happy with the bad wing, no not for me. But asking for the sweet scene of my cheek. I gonna have to sing more than reality. I but I don't die. I die don't die. But asking for the sweet scene of my cheek. I gonna have to sing more than reality. I but I don't die. You wanna see girls that shake with them? I'm like, hey, the ones that's praising their holy savior. Let it go. I'm in the chick, take your time to flick, flick, search to find, or look to see. But, but baby, mom's the way to be. Search to find, or look to see the bride of your life, like Heartbreakers, heartbreaks And asking for the sweet seed of my tree You're gonna have to sing more than reality I, but I don't die I